connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ, then we have the Spirit of God flowing in and through us. And it's that Spirit of God that we release, that's released out of us in these words, that's released through the anointed Word of God when it's preached, when it's spoken to you, that goes into your heart and your mind and that changes you. And you know what? You may not even know you're being changed. You may not even realize that for a little bit. You go on your merry way. You're just coming and you're sitting. You're coming and you're sitting and you're hearing and you're hearing. And then one day you begin to look around and you go, you know what? I feel a change coming on. I feel there's been a change in me. And you know what? The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing asunder the soul. I believe it says the soul and the spirit. How that it can even cut through. Your soul and your spirit is like so connected. It's like right in this body. But the word of God can go through and it can cut and it can divide. And you know, I was praying this morning. And as I was praying, I was thinking about somebody that had said a lot of vicious things in the past to some people that we love dearly. And I was thinking and I thought, you know, when I see this person, and I've asked the Lord to forgive me, to forgive me, Lord. I don't want to have anything against this person. But when I see this person... It's not like I mistreat them. It's not like I have anything bad to say about them. But I can tell you it's easy for me to walk by them and not shake their hand. I just smile at them. And as I was sitting there and as I, as I visioned this, I want you to try to see what I saw. And I was just like I saw it in the spirit. It was like a line divided. I could see them this way or I could see them as completely sin free. I saw two pictures like side by side of this person. And I thought immediately, God, I can make a choice whether I want to see them as they never sinned against this person that I love, or I can see them as guilty. We can make a choice how we want to see people that have hurt us or hurt someone we love. We can make a choice. And I thought right there, it's in your mind. The enemy's going to come against your mind. And I thought, I have to make a decision here. I have to see them as they've never done anything wrong. Because it's not my place to judge them. And however we see them is how we'll treat them. And that's not the fruit of the Spirit. If it's not love, joy, peace. But we have to make a decision. And that's going back to where Paul said, I put myself, I put my body under subjection. I make my body. Listen, and, that's, and that was one of the things here. Let me go back here. Being the boss over my own desires. My flesh would desire to just write this person off. But the Spirit of God tells me, you can't do that. You can't do that and walk in a place pleasing to me. So I now see, and I thank God for revealing that to me. That you don't have to see this way. You don't have to look the way the enemy would want you to look at people. But you can look at the way God wants you to look at people. The word of God is so powerful. It's so powerful. that if we'll listen to the word of God, if we will get it inside of us, it'll change our thinking. And let me tell you something. It's a decision. The Bible said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Every day we make a decision. He said, whom you yield your members to, you're a servant thereof. So it's up to us every day. How we're going to see people. And believe me, the enemy's right there to tell you all the bad things that all of us have done. He's right there to tell us. And I thought, you know what? If we wanted to look at somebody, or if we wanted to think about somebody that was so guilty, we would look at Paul, Saul, rather, before he was Apostle Paul, of all the things that he did to the church. But forgiven. God forgave him. And he didn't even look back and say, oh, I'm so guilty of all this. I'm so guilty. The Bible said that when we ask God to forgive us, it's put in a sea of forgetfulness, not to be remembered anymore. And it's cast away as far as the east is from the west. And I do believe that when we have sinned and we go before God and we say, Lord, forgive me, that he forgives us. I believe that. When we believe that he has forgiven us and when we go back again and we say, God, oh, when the enemy's just running through your mind and trying to bring all this guilt back, and we say, God, forgive me. And we've already asked him. It's like, what? What? That's already forgotten. He said, cast in a sea of forgetfulness. Not to be remembered. 
So why, if you are just reminded of the enemy, would you keep bringing it up to God? Because it's like, what? What? John 15 and 6. John 15 and 6. If anyone does not take, does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. The Bible talks about in the last days how that the angels will gather those that have not served God and they will take they will be they will take them and they will cast them into the lake of fire. And the branches that do not bear fruit are those that have not kept or stayed connected to Christ, the vine. He is the vine. He's the only vine. He's the only one that we need to stay connected to. And you think about all these different religions and all these people that are following a lie. The Bible says you believe a lie and you'll be damned. That's why we need to do the work of God. The Bible said the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. And these people that have these other religions that serve other gods, they need to have their eyes and their minds enlightened to the truth of the word of God. And who do you think is going to spread that gospel? Who do you think is going to spread that word? It's going to be the body of Christ. It's going to be us that are connected to the vine. And you say, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Begin to ask God how you can be a resourceful part in the body that will touch the world. You may not go out here and touch all of Asia or Africa or something like that, but you can be a vital part of reaching those around you because I tell you nowadays there's all kinds of religions around us. It's just like a melting pot no matter where you go. So we have ample opportunity to touch a lot of people even around our own neighborhoods. So we can't say, well, I can't go here, I can't go there. And even though you can't, God may use you to, to fund somebody that's going to these places so that you can touch somebody to be saved, to have their eyes enlightened to the truth, to the word of God. Let's go to Luke 13, 6 and 9. Luke 13, 6 and 9. <clears throat> Also, this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. He said, Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground, or why allow it to occupy the ground uselessly? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it, and dung it, or fertilize it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. God is looking for fruit in our life. God is looking for us to bear fruit. See, God is holding us accountable for what he has told us in this word that we are to do. And if we don't do it, we can't say, I didn't know, because we have the word. And one of, my, one of the things that I really like is, you know, people say, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, I can't be held accountable for what I don't know. Oh, yes, you can. You go out here and try to hunt and fish on a day that you're not supposed to or without a hunting license or a fishing license. And what are they going to tell you? They're going to tell you every year we put out this little brochure that tells you what the regulations and the rules are. And if you don't abide by them, you're guilty for not getting the book. And they're going to fine you real good. And probably take your gun, probably take your uh, fishing poles or whatever. And see, that's like us with the word of God. We have no excuse for not knowing. We have no excuse. You've got Bibles, you got Bible apps, you got Bible on the phone. Almost everybody keeps their phones with them. You can, there's access. There is, you can have, there's all kinds of different <coughs> varieties or ways of getting the word of God. You need a Bible? Tell us. We'll get you one. We'll get you one. You know somebody that needs a Bible? Tell us. We'll get them one. 
We don't want anybody to be without the word of God because it's essential that we have this. We have to have this. We have to live the way God is telling us to live because we have to please him. It's not about us. It's not about pleasing one another, but it's about pleasing the I am that I am. The God of the universe that has put this word here for us to follow his instructions. And he expects us to do that. We as parents expect our children to obey us, don't we? Don't we? If we have children or have had children at home, don't we expect them to obey us? Amen. Well, we have a father that expects us to obey what he says. And if we choose not to, we'll be cut off. If we bear no fruit, we'll be cut off. Let's go to Matthew 7 and 15. Matthew 7 and 15. And here he's talking about, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. See, it's one thing to profess something on the outside, but whatever's on the inside, it's going to come out of your mouth. It's going to come out. People are going to know you. People are going to know. That's like I said, I've worked with people that have said, I'm born again, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven, and they are living like the devil, and they don't care. I knew, I knew this person years and years ago, and nothing against Catholics or anything, but they said, I'm a Catholic, and... Just, you know, you're a Christian, I'm a Catholic. The only difference is I get to do whatever I want to. And you can't. And I get to go to heaven. And I thought, oh boy, you got a rude awakening. Because the same word of God that's for me is for you, regardless of what a man has told you and the lie that you believe. This is the gospel. This is the good news. <laughs> this is the truth. This is, and it's not what man says. That's why the Bible said they would believe a lie and be damned. But that's why we need to have the anointing of God in our life. We need to be so close and so connected to the vine that when somebody is in our presence that is like this, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost can convict them of their sins, and we don't have to say a word. Smith Wigglesworth was a man that whenever he went any place, it talks about in one of his books how that he went got on this train, this cart, uh, rail cart or something, and there was somebody that just got on there too, and he began to just fall down and cry out, and he said, man of God, you convict me of my sins. He didn't have to say anything, because the power of God was so, so strong in his life. And that's what we need to have, the power of God is so strong in our lives. And I know we're not going to get there overnight. We're not going to get there overnight. It's, a, it's not an overnight process. But it is an ongoing process. And we can get there. We can get there. Where am I? Okay, let's do that. John 15 and 16. Let's go to that one. Wait, I forgot to read Matthew 7 and 21. You don't have to turn there, but let me just finish reading this. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now let's go to John 15 and 16. It says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you would go and bear much fruit. And that your fruit would remain, so that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. 
See, there's a reason why he wants us to bear much fruit. How many like that? So that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. How many need some whatsoever I ask to be given unto me? How many are still needing that? Me. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear much fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He chose you. Let's say this. He chose me. He, he chose, chose me. me. Let's try it again. He, he chose, chose me. me. God chose us. He chose us. He picked us. Pointed us out. He, he wanted us. That's like a, a mother that gives birth to a child. She is she getting what's born to her. What she's having. But if she adopts a child, she picks out the one she wants. And the Bible said we've been adopted. We've been adopted. We have been. God has brought us unto himself because he chose us. Let's fill up. I got one more scripture here. Let's go to Psalms 1 and 3. Psalms 1 and 3. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams. Let's just, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it a little bit before that. Psalms 1, let's just go Psalms 1, 1. That looks pretty good. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of, scorn, of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. If you're planted, if you're planted, if you're connected to the vine, if you are planted, the tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Let me tell you something. He said that he is, he's the life source for us. You know, and it's like somebody that's in the hospital that's, that's on life support. That machine is what's keeping them alive. That is what, that's the only thing they have at that point, other than God himself, and they may not even realize that. But do you know he is more, he means more, and we need him more than a life support machine because he is life to us. And we need him. We need the lifeline, which is Jesus Christ. We need him. I'm going to turn this back over to John. If anyone needs prayer today, if anyone wants to come and pray, this altar is open.